There's like a whole nother barrier than just like listening to it. Yeah. And now we're breaking it down and you're listening to it from another perspective. So it's yeah. almost like different shades of that song. Yeah. I got a OR format too. Did you want to kind of when you made that? Cause I think, cause what I do is like, when I say something, uh, as I'm listening back to it, and I'm starting to try to like finish the lyrics, um, I say something in there that I'm like, that it gives me a bigger picture, like feel like maybe I said I'm beginning to feel like the rain again, and I'm like, oh, like I could make this into something about depression where it's like dark and rainy. Yeah. Certain things trigger it off. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like, you know, and, and a lot of times, like, my lyrics will be about the same thing, just spread out. And then there's a lot of, like, that doesn't make sense in between. And so I'm like, wow, it sounds like I'm trying to say this. And so I just kind of connect all the pieces together. Yeah. That, that almost kind of reminds me of my, my format. Like, I got this wild format man, that I always had of making music. Yeah. My music. Like, I was just saying in our conversation about how most people who on some kind of dietary discipline, yeah. you, you may find that they have some kind of spirituality, 
some kind of link in their spirituality where they may be climbing or they might be evolving somehow. Like it always, in most cases, that's how it is. Same way with uh, my spirituality kind of went hand in hand with my music as a youngster being like, they go to 15. Like I start reading the, the, the fourth and stuff at 15. Cause I start getting some knowledge yourself. Like, so that was a big dramatic change to start some at a young, I started a lot of things at 14 or 15. So the life changed for me. But to start on the food side, when I wasn't buying all of my food. So it was like, I wouldn't get support in the household from it. So that was a dramatic change that I made. Oh, wow. So uh, I had to get out of it. I had to substitute for my little, uh, my life change. But, but on the same way with, uh, on the music side, the way it impacted me. And the part in the solo, it was like, you remember all this. It was things that I used to make in my music that was, uh, I used to call it prophetic because my inspiration, I never knew where, I still don't know, that's the way it was. <laughs> I still don't know the place where I be grabbing this stuff from. I just say, man, beat tone. I tell the people to beat tone. Yeah. So to explain this mystical place, even though I know there's a nationality, I know there's a universal, but that was, some of us know as a mental reservoir. Yeah. That why they say there's nothing new under the sun, and why they say uh, there ain't nothing you can think of, but ain't been thought of before. Because there's a mental reservoir where all can access, all do access, but some access to greater levels than others. And they get to be called geniuses and all this stuff based on what they access. But there's a reservoir that's out there. Like we have a mind that's not, our brain is in our skull, but our mind is not. Our mind is something that's uh, connected to this higher source. Yeah, and it's um, tangible. And you can touch the brain, but the brain gives access to the mind, which is everywhere. The same way with this the reservoir. That's what I know. I just be connecting it in places that I connect it. That's what I call it. Zone. But within all of this, format be grass things and it be like a, like you say a little it be a middle area yeah or something my little middle area be like it be things that it don't be nothing it be things that resonate with me that with me but I be like where did this come from and I don't fully know and most of the time that stuff that I don't fully know it always end up being something profound. That's how I've always been. My partner so well used to always like, whether I said the wrong date, I tried to say this date, and I said that date, that date that I end up saying, yeah. that end up being something like, and I gotta record it. But yeah, that's my personal point. That's weird because sometimes I do the same thing where I'm like, I don't know why, but I can't think of the thing that fits this area to kind of connect these things and I'm like that's just what it's going to have to end as it's this thing that kind of is out of place yeah. and I don't know why you know I never thought about it like that but I always just was like it just like it just works you know the way I said it the words that I used for it did it perfectly and yeah. I try to like change it and every other thing I try like it just doesn't feel or sound the same so I'm like gotta stay and not make sense <laughs> yeah and if you keep looking into it someday it may because there ain't no such mm -hmm. thing as mistakes and what seemed to be like grabbing for something you know what now that we're talking about it that's exactly what the it read on my head thing was like I don't know why I had that in there it didn't really make sense to what I was writing a song about, but it, something was written on my head, yeah. and at the end, I'm like, 
on my forehead it read that it's all in your head but to me it didn't make sense that it's all in my head because I'm trying to say that it's mental illness and to say that it's all in your head mm -hmm. is the is the opposite mm -hmm. and so I'm like why but I couldn't think of anything else to replace it with so I left it and I was just like it's just gonna have to be you know, so but when you say it out and I think about it, yeah, it makes sense. On your forehead, if it was written on your forehead, mm -hmm. it was all in your head. Mm -hmm. That can be taken a lot of ways. Like, right. The problem is all in your head, the answer is all in your head. Yeah. But it's all in your head. Yeah, I'm gonna let them pull it up. But yeah, that's the kind of shit, man, like I'll be talking about, like, <laughs> But that's that's within creation, though, bro. That's what I come. That's what I was saying. My spirituality ran hand in hand with my music. Yeah. Because it was creation, and it was music that inspired me to. Uh, was bringing me to another thing. And it's the stuff I tell my sons. I tell my children. As far as. If your rapper, if your favorite rapper don't inspire you, or your your favorite rappers or singers or poets or whoever, if they don't inspire you to reach higher, it's like point. The reason why I bring that up when I'm talking about my spirituality and my music, because certain ones that. I came on as far as musically that I linked with and I looked up to. Like they gave me something. Like they made me even want to go study my culture. Yeah. They made me want to go study uh and based on where I was living, like some of the stuff was uh like I wasn't just into the uh I wasn't just into like what they just call just the senseless gangster rap. Mm -hmm. Which those the labels they gave them, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't just never into just the ride by, spray him in front of his mama, oh. ride off, like all that crazy ill shit. Like I was never into that shit that like compassion, yeah. like all of that. Yeah, I'm a real, I'm a real cat, man. Like I'm into the morals, shit with morality, like all of that type of stuff, bro. So cats like Tupac, Scarface, like a lot of them. Uh, yeah. Your DMXs, your, uh, your Nazis, like a lot of ones who was just on that balance. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that balance, bro, like where you might get some sweet element shit because that's where we at. Like, that's, where you, that's where you was at. But you're getting the wisdom and you're getting the jewels that come from that God that make diamonds. Like, that was the beauty of what I was seeing, but like just that one sided, just problem shit, just the part of the problem shit, with none of the solution in you, like, I don't want never with that shit, bro. Like, I don't want never with that. But, like, if them artists make you reach higher, where they yeah. make you, when they get through, like, man, what the fuck he said? Like, what he said, bro? Yeah. What was that word, bro, to make you go dictionary checking if you don't know it? Go or dig what he for said, it. If you felt it went over your head, like, I gotta know, you know what I'm saying? So, it won't be over my head. Like it, it, it makes you reach, you know what I mean? It makes you yeah. reach higher and higher. So if your people are making you reach higher, if they just teaching you the new drug, what it is? Oh, it's the new Miley? What? Like, oh, it's the, oh, it's that new one? Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If it's only teaching you the new drug, the hit the line, and all that, like. It's funny because I found myself a lot of times trying to force myself to like make a song about nothing or a song that like you would hear like on the radio now and I just can't I don't know I, I think I mean I grew up listen, listening to a lot of music but maybe because the specific things I grew up listening to like they had certain substance so like it feels like it feels like I'm on the stage and everybody's watching me and I'm like, I just feel like awkward. It just doesn't fit, you know, it doesn't feel right. 
but I know I will. But I feel that I can't do. I can't do certain shit. I won't do certain shit. Yeah. For real, man. It's like nobody been asking me to do certain <laughs> shit. But like for real, like, I mean I don't knock certain shit, bro. But I just don't support certain shit. There's some stuff I ain't get. And that ain't no knock to the generation. Yeah. Because uh, hell, we was talking up about uh, a conversation I was having with somebody else a day before. And it was about uh, how a lot of the millennials, like if they parent them bring them up into, uh, put it like this, a lot of them don't know what R&B is. Man. Yeah. It's simply said, but that's some wild shit. Bro. Like if you don't know nothing about the whole funk era, you don't know nothing about none of these soul players like missing. Yeah. The soul is what that soul funk that was going on in the 60s, the 70s, and a lot of that is what sparked right. shit. That's what created this whole G funk, this whole gangster sound, this whole other form of hip hop where they grabbed and started sampling the soul. They kept the soul in it, but now they don't know what songs is and shit no more. It's like they didn't get the ball, the ball got dropped. So it's like they're missing that shit, and everything is generic. It's like everything is generic. Now, but the ones that, that the new generation that did break the ball, they get all of the advancements yeah. from those who can form, they got the baton. Because if you ain't get the baton, I mean, you just start on clean slate from now. You don't know where you came from, so you don't know where the hell you going. You're going to run to a brick wall. But if you got the baton from then, and then you get to add all of them experiences with your new advancements that come from, like, you a new model. Like, yeah. they a new model will be here. You know what I mean? Like, you got some of us from high school that was ahead of our time. Like, I'm one of them, you know what I'm saying, who was ahead of their time, or who was ahead of my generation. So it's like, I seen a, shit, a lot of shit way before a lot of people who was in my generation to the point where this new model, I look at it like the Terminators. Like you have the T2, the T2000, and you have the, the uh, for real, the T2000, became liquid metal, then yeah. you got the new one, then the next one. The models keep advancing. But if it was looking like a succession thing, and it was passing on this advancement to that advancement, it would only increase and increase and increase. But if they chopping off, they go, oh, yeah, oh, it's for this head, that head. Yeah. And they're getting chopped off. They're not getting the baton. But that's why on the music side, when it comes to rappers like Kendrick Lamar or those like J. Cole, the ones who get put on the pedestal nowadays, like hands down, when I mean, you can't, whether they get radio play or not, they still get put on the pedestal because they are who they are, they're doing what they're doing. Those are the ones who got the baton. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They got the baton and they represent it now with their advancements of their generation. Like that they get examples a lot more, but they get examples. But a lot of you know, the other ones didn't. They didn't get it. You know what I'm saying? And they pretty much the bastards. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The bastards of the game. That's what we get. Like that's who influence a lot of our children. Children out here. Just had to say that. Yeah. You might need to pick this up on one of um Fabio sessions. <laughs> What's the name of it? Wait, what? What's the name? Of it? <laughs> What's the name of your session? Your radio station. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 The song. Is that the fresh produce? Yeah. Okay. I think that's the fresh produce. Yeah. Fresh produce. Yes. Was well, the fresh produce about the the yeah, projects like that they're working on at the time? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Check that out. Check that out.